Now, Jan, you and I have been talking a bunch about Turkey, and I so appreciate your compassion for the people in Turkey. And, and uh, we were talking about the earthquake the other day, and it just reminded me of this passage, and I do want to read it to you. Um, it's Revelation 16, as you all know. Uh, those of you online, you're familiar with the book of Revelation. You got the seal judgments, um, you got the trumpet judgments, you got the bowl judgments, and there's earthquakes that occur, um, and they're striking throughout the book. But you, by the time you get to the seventh bowl, let me just read this. It says, then the seventh angel poured out his bowl on the air, and it, it, it says it's done. There's a cry there. There's flashes of lightnings and, 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 and peals of thunder, and it says, and there was a great earthquake, such as there had not been since man has come upon the earth. It was totally destructive. And I want you to see this, I want you to, to comment on this video clip because I think this is an example. Beware, this is just, this is just a taste yeah. of what is to come. Watch this. The earthquakes in Turkey, as we've reported for days now, destroyed city after city and have claimed and changed thousands of lives. They've changed landscapes though too. A ravine the width of a football pitch has opened up outside the city of Antakya, cracking asunder a landscape rich with olive groves, as John has discovered. Since the earthquake struck southern Turkey in the early hours of Monday morning last week, most of the focus, obviously, has been on the consequences for human beings. Far less attention has been on the consequences for the earth itself. But here in the farmland outside Antakya, there is a very good example of that. This is the world's newest valley. During that awful night as they cowered in their homes, the locals knew that something cataclysmic had happened. But imagine their surprise when they first saw this chasm. We went to the bottom of it for the perspective from down there, but actually, the best way to illustrate what we're talking about here is from above. The local people said that at the time they thought it was an air raid. The sound of explosions created by cracking rock, the flashes by the sparks that flew as the Earth's crust was torn apart. It used to be a flat field. I would ride my motorbike on it, said this boy. It was all an olive grove which is now bisected by a gorge that in places is the width of a football field. The rift is so deep that a 13-story building could fit in it. Now, I want you to think about this. How many of you gone to some place like the Grand Canyon? I was just uh, south of the Dead Sea. A couple, of, uh, a couple of days ago, and I had someone saying, look, millions and billions of years ago, the water cut through the rocks here. And if somebody saw that today and went there, they'd say, oh, millions and billions of years ago. No, one night and one earthquake. You understand where I'm going with that? So you can attack God, you can say the Bible's not true, but I would suggest to you, beware. Think about the significance of this. Now you too. This happened in one night, and this is just merely a, a, a drop in the bucket yeah. compared to what's coming. Yeah, you have to picture this all over the planet, everywhere, not just in Turkey, in every country of the world. This is for the left behind. You don't want to be left behind. Yeah, and then think about the other implications of it. With these fissures opening up, you're going to have volcanic activity. With this sort of fissures opening up, you're going to end up having tsunamis, right? It's, it's catastrophic and massive in nature. So, so take heed, fear God, believe in the Lord Jesus Christ.